Hello and welcome to today's video. In this video we'll be taking a look back at how my Stocks and Shares I support portfolio performed over the month of July. I hope July was a good month for you and you managed to cope with the heatwave. For me, July was horrific. I was still feeling rough from Covid and on top of that the vendor on our new property decided to pull out just as we were due to exchange after somehow dragging out what should have been a simple purchase for nearly 8 months. This has put a bit of a spanner in the works as a lot of my future plans were wrapped up in that property. But don't worry, I'll make it work. On the plus side, that means I do have a bit more time again, so I can hopefully make some of the other videos I've wanted to make. I'm not letting this get me down though. I think life's all about how you react to situations, and not the situations themselves. The majority of July saw the same factors that have plagued the markets for the year, but right at the end of the month we start to see the dreaded word being banded around recession. It's been talked about for a long time now, and with the majority of wholesale costs still set to rise even further in the near future, unfortunately the foreseeable future outlook is looking bleak. I made a video recently about changes I was making to my portfolio and the way I'm investing. With a possible recession looming, I'm holding back for now to see if stocks tumble anymore. With so many various sectors taking a hit at the moment though, I'm sure it won't be hard to find a value pick somewhere. I am being cautious at the minute though, and just shoring up two of my latest holdings while I still see value there. So let's start diving into my portfolio. I'll start with income. I did get a small dividend payment from my Lintel fund. This fund is on my bin list currently due to some of its holdings not sitting right with me. Even if it wasn't for those, I think I'd chop this in for an accumulation variant anyway, as it does seem a bit pointless now having it as an income fund. That small dividend payment keeps my monthly average income up though, so that's a bonus. You can see how little I got in loyalty bonus payments this month. I normally easily clear £1 a month in those payments, but the bulk of those is mainly made up from my Fidelity Global Focus Fund. This fund recently has some changes made to how it's managed, and if you look on the fact sheet for it, there is no longer an ongoing saving offered by HL. Now I have had months in the past where I've not received a payment from this fund, and then have received two months worth the following month, but I'm thinking that this may not be the case here. If anyone knows for sure, then please let me know. I was fully expecting to hit the £10 auto reinvestment mark in July, but with that missing payment I ended up falling short, and just to really kick me while I'm down, the graph literally looks like it's giving me the finger. July was not my month. On the plus side though, my portfolio on the whole is back out of the red and is up nearly £300 on the previous month. Not bad going. You can see it's still my shares that are putting my returns down overall, which was something I addressed in my previous video. It's going to take a while to see some results from that, but hopefully I will soon, as they seem to be performing well and I'm pretty happy with my picks. Centrica reinstated their dividend recently. At one pence per share is a very tentative step, but it's a step at least. They're having to walk a fine line though between pleasing investors but still remaining profitable. They announced huge profits recently, which has angered some, but unfortunately things aren't quite as rosy as they seem. Centrica are the owners of British Gas and a massive part of the UK gas network. While a lot of smaller UK energy firms have gone bust due to them generally buying their gas ad hoc and not being able to keep up with the rising costs, Centrica have the ability to purchase gas and store it for later use so they can iron out those big price fluctuations. The problem for the future though is that a lot of customers that were with the energy firms that have gone bust now need to be supplied by British Gas. So they now find themselves in a position of having a lot more demand than they were planning for. This will have an impact on their margins. Legal in general should also be going ex-dividend in the middle of August, with a payment expected in the next couple of months. With the additional shares I've purchased and the previous dividend reinvested, I should still get over the minimum £10 from this payment, so that it can be automatically reinvested again. The main driving force that has dragged my portfolio out of the red this month has been the Fidelity Global Focus Fund. I can forgive it for not paying a loyalty bonus this month, as it has returned me over £120 on the just over £1,000 I have in there. That's a pretty decent return. My worst performer is still the JP Morgan Emerging Markets Fund. Although it has seen some uplift recently, I still think I'm a long way off being able to sell it off for a profit. I'm in two minds about whether to pay my loyalty bonus reinvestment into this fund, just to speed things up a bit, by bringing the average buying cost down but I think this would be detrimental to growth elsewhere. I'll run through the funds I haven't looked at quickly now. Feel free to pause and take a longer look if you want. 
Let me know below how you think things are going to go in August. Are you playing for a recession or are you carrying on unaffected? I hope whatever you're doing though, you've had a better month than me. That's it for today. Don't forget to sub for future content. I hope to see you next time. Take care out there. Peace.